Hey guys, so today I'm going to do part two of Millennial Math. Um, this is going to be focused more for third grade probably because it's, they start doing multiplication probably towards the end of third grade, especially by fourth grade, but definitely by the end of third grade they usually start doing some multiplication and trying to learn, you know, um, the different steps to multiply. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I learned how to multiply the old-fashioned way where you would multiply, you know, the four times the five and the five times the eight and then the four times the two and then the two times the eight and then you'd have to have the zero for the placeholder and add the, that's hard for them. They don't understand that placeholder. I don't understand that placeholder. So it's hard to teach them why you actually need that placeholder. So when we were given problems like this, um, that's how we would multiply. But your children are probably coming home and doing something similar to this. This is called the box method of multiplication. They'll probably immediately draw these boxes and they're gonna break apart that number. We talked yesterday about breaking apart a number. The box method uses place value in order to break apart a number and multiply parts of the numbers. And the best way to do that is for me to just kind of jump right in and show you an example. The very first example I'm going to show you is actually going to be a two digit times a one digit. So we would see 92 times 7 and multiply the 7 times the 2 and the 7 times the 9. This is what your child would most, most likely do. They're going to break apart the 92 into 90 and 2. And of course, they're going to keep that 7. So the first number you're going to, you know, the first number um, that you're going to multiply goes across and the second number is going to go down this way. Okay, another trick or shortcut your children are being taught is when you see 90 times 7, just think of 9 times 7. Don't try to actually do, you know, 97 times or 7 90 times. 9 times 7 is 63. And then you just need to add that 0 because it's a 10. And then, of course, 7 times 2 is just going to give you 14. So, what the next step on how you figure out what 92 times 7 is, is you simply just have to add these two. So you would, they would come over here to the side, 63 plus 14, and that's going to give you 644. And I did check that on the calculator to make sure that, that my calculations were correct. But to me, um, I think this method's pretty easy um, once you kind of get used to it. Um, it certainly is easier kind of multiplying smaller numbers and, um, and multiplying numbers that have a 10 because then these numbers ultimately are going to be a little bit easier to add in the end, okay? Let's do um, a couple more examples. I'm going to try my best to, to show you as many examples as I can. The next one we're going to do is going to be a two-digit times a two-digit. It's going to be 84 times 25. So for this one, we're going to have to draw an extra section of boxes. So now you actually have four boxes instead of two. The other one, um, you just had uh, these two top boxes. Now we've added some boxes at the bottom because it's a two-digit times a two-digit. So with a two-digit times a two-digit, you're going to multiply 80 and 20. And again, we teach students to do the shortcuts. 8 times 2 is going to give you 16, and then it has two extra zeros. Then you're going to do 80 times 5. Well, 8 times 5 is 40, and then we just need that one extra zero. Now we're going to do 4 times 20. So 4 times, um, 4 times 2 would be 8, and then that extra zero makes it 80. And then, of course, 4 times 5 is going to be 20. So then in the end, they would add 1,600, 400, 80, 20. Now, it's not important that you, uh, it is important that you put the numbers in order, but as you see as we get a little bit um, deeper into it, like for the 80 and the 20, it really is not important if you put the 20 um, before the 80 um, because they're, they're, it's just a two-digit number, but as long as you add them up according to their place value, put the largest numbers with the most numbers on top and then so on. But again, just to avoid confusion, it's probably just uh, better just to tell your student or your child to just put the numbers in order, you know, from largest to smallest. So then, if, as you see, when you've got zeros, it's just so much easier to add these numbers, okay? So when we add them, 
um, we would get 21,000. And again, I did check that on the calculator. Okay, let's do a three digit times a two digit and I'll let you see what that looks like. So we're gonna do 267 times 55. So with this one, the top number has three digits, so I'm gonna have to draw um, three boxes at the top and then two boxes down because the two uh, the 267 has the three digits and 55 has has two. So you would break apart that number to 260 and seven and then 50 and five, just like that. And that is what your multiplication your multiplication boxes would look like. So with the 200 times 50, um, your student is, um, again, that shortcut, five times two would be 10. And then I see three zeros, so I have to add my three zeros. So that's gonna give us um, our 10,000. And then 60 times 50, well, six times five is 30. And then we gotta add those two extra zeros. And then seven times 50 would give us 35. And then um, that, extra, that extra zero. So seven times five is 35. And then with the 50, you have to add the zero, okay? So let's continue on. So we're going to do 200 times 5, which would be um, 1,000. And we would do 60 times 5. So 6 times 5 is 30. And then add one zero. And then the 7 times 5 is 35. That's what your bottom box would look like. Okay. So again, um, you would uh, instruct the student or your child to put the numbers in order, largest to smallest, and then add them paying special attention to lining up those uh, place values, uh, lining up your numbers all the way to the left. When we read, we read from right to left. With math, we read from left to right. It's the opposite, okay? So you would add up the 10,000. I would encourage you to um, have them do their, um, their commas. 3,000, 1,350, 335 and that's what their addition would look like at the bottom and and all that's uh, five uh, 54,685 once you add all of that up okay the last thing I'm going to show you is going to be a three digit times a three digit um, I, you know once you do a couple of these um, if you can do, you know, the, the, even the two digit times the two digit, the three digit times the three digit is basically the same. Um, it's really just important that you have the number of boxes. Um, so a three digit times a three digit is going to require nine boxes because you've got three digits for the top number and three digits for the bottom number. So this is what your boxes would look like right here. So you would take, um, you would break apart those numbers. I know my handwriting sloppy, sorry. 890 and six, and then 360 and five. And that's what your boxes would look like, okay? So as we fill these out, we know that eight times three is gonna be 18. And you have one, two, three, four, um, zero. So 18 and then one, two, three, four and then make sure you encourage them to put their commas. Let's do 90 times three. Nine times three is 27, and I see three zeros, so one, two, three, so that would be 27,000. Six times 300, six times three is 18, and then two zeros, okay? Again, encourage them to put their commas, okay? So 90, 90 times um, 60 right here, so nine times six is going to be, um, 42, and um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong column. I gotta do 800, sorry. Eight times six is 42, and then add the three zeros, okay? Now, now nine times 60 is going to be 48, and then add the two zeros, 60 times six, six times six is 36, add a zero. 800 times five, eight times five is 40, and then you add the two zeros. 90 times five, well, nine times five is 45, adding one zero. And then that last column, six times five, of course, is um, 30. Okay? 
And then again, um, I won't bore you with the rest of it, but you start with the largest number, which would be 180,000. You would um, add the 42,000, the 27,000, uh, so on and so on um, in order, and uh, finally get your final answer of 260,440 would be your final answer for that. So thank you guys for watching my video. I sure hope this um, multiplication table, this box method of math um, that your millennials are bringing home, um, I hope that explained it a little bit better. Um, again, we were talking about Common Core and how Common Core doesn't say you have to multiply this way. Common Core doesn't say you can't multiply the old fashioned way. Common Core just says some people's brain uh, thinks about process and processes information a little bit different and to be completely honest um, in the future I, if I had to multiply several numbers I would probably use the box method I think it's easier and I think it also um, cuts down on um, the room for mistake when you're having to use that zero as a placeholder and then add um, I really do think it's a useful method that your kids are bringing home so don't knock it before you try it so next time your kids um, you know uh, don't know how to do their multiplication or you're trying to maybe figure out how they got the wrong answer at least now you'll know how um, you know their 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 method of operation with that uh, multiplication box method okay all right so stay tuned for part three of uh, millennial math and it's going to be a, um, some more multiplication tricks for your child, for you to share with your child. Have a great day, guys. Bye.